You didn't hear this from me. Greetings, Lux lovers. Welcome or welcome back. Here we believe in intentional luxury and we're not afraid to invest in pieces that will work for us. So if that resonates with you, then please consider subscribing and stay a while. Some people watch soap operas, but me, I love Hermes gossip and nerding out on Hermes shopping strategy. One of my favorite YouTubers, So Coco, does an annual Hermes conspiracy theory video that I've really enjoyed over the years. So I thought I would join in the fun and offer my own totally unfounded and alleged opinions on our favorite brand because I have some thoughts. Plus, I'll share some data points from this latest score with you to consider as we try to demystify the inner workings of Hermes to hopefully help get the items that you want on your wish list. And this is an example of how I got my hands on this display only item. And I've got the receipts, literally. But remember, you didn't hear this from me. So let's begin. First, I'll go through some of my more generic thoughts and personal theories that I've been collecting for a while. And so we can start with some softball theories. First, I think the ratio game is not actually real and like trained on, but I do think you do need to get your essay's attention. We talk a lot of game about one-to-one -one spends or two-to-one spends, and I don't actually think this is formal practice. And also this is just me speaking on behalf of like my experience in the US market. But I do think that a few larger purchases will make a bigger impression with your essay than say 10 to 20 small to medium sized purchases. So that's why I think the rumors of getting bags after ready to wear purchases or fine jewelry or home goods spend came into existence. My next theory kind of related to this is that I do think that taking a non quota bag offer sets you back from being offered a quota bag in the near future. And my unpopular opinion is that this spend should probably not even be considered as part of your pre-spend calculation. I used the analogy in a previous video about how I think about our essays as like a mother bird trying to feed all of the hungry mouths of their clients who are like little baby birds trying to get some food. And I think if you fall for the trap of accepting a non-quota bag, if you are in fact angling for a quota bag, you'll no longer have priority for the next bag that comes along because the essay will feel like, you know, you've already been fed. And I do believe them when they say that bags are harder and harder to come by, whether or not they're quota or non-quota. So just keep this in mind next time you're offered something that doesn't quite make your heart sing. Okay, so now I'll get into some more juicier theories. And one is, I think the FSH Paris lottery appointment system exists to shield the company against lawsuits of discrimination. Now, I'm certainly no lawyer, but I'm personally shocked that Hermes has not already been sued by having this practice shrouded in mystery of who gets a quota bag and who doesn't. But now with this lottery system, they do have a mechanism to point to, to show that anyone in the world, no matter whether you've spent or not, all has an equal shot of getting a quota bag with no purchase history. And I also kind of think that the bag drops that we see on the various global websites all point to the company demonstrating some kind of fair playing field. Again, zero basis for any of my opinions I'm sharing here, but it just seems like such a conspicuous out of character system. And I often wonder why they do it at all. In my next theory, we're totally going to nerd out, but I think that it's IT systems that are holding them back from unifying one customer's global spend details, but this may not be the case forever. I have personally worked on back end data systems for some of our favorite luxury brands back in my consulting days, and you would be shocked to know what happens behind the scenes. Basically, these companies are so old that they kind of just like grew up technologically out of necessity rather than with a big strategic plan. So they might literally have different kinds of point of sale systems globally, like maybe in each region and maybe even multiple CRM systems and CRM stands for customer relationship management systems across the globe if they have them at all. Now it is interesting that Hermes does seem to have a CRM system, but CRM systems in general capture things about one customer things like spend history, customer lifetime value, wish list items, and other kind of relevant notes that you might want to know about like birthdays or anniversaries. But what does this mean for us? Well, it basically means there might be a loophole in the system as a lot of people have talked about. And it makes sense that one region, say in the US, may have a totally separate database or profile about one customer than in say Europe. In fact, this is totally common. So in a way you would be able to get a quota bag in one region and then you could in theory be eligible for a quota bag in another region without penalty. 
So this loophole is good for you if you are able to kind of demonstrate spend and have relationships across more than one region. But on the downside for most of us, all the good spend and pre-spend you have in one country is totally not even visible in the next country. And I say that this might not last forever because companies are just getting hip with the times and they are starting to unify their back-end systems the more that technology is catching up. Because of course this would be in Hermes's best interest to be able to truly limit the purchasing of a quota bag to one individual once or twice a year globally. So I wouldn't be surprised that in the coming years they figure out how to do this for their databases. So keep that in mind. And while we're on the topic of technology, a recent PurseBop article was published on a new development where shoppers were sharing that they were no longer able to apply for a Paris online leather appointment from their home locations outside of Paris. And it seems like the system was blocking these requests. And my theory here is that they might have put a simple filter on the requests based on something like IP address, which is basically like the computer sharing where you're accessing your computer or phone from. Simply put, this will limit the pool of people who can apply to cut down on the noise of who they give appointments to. So there might be globally like thousands of people who are just randomly throwing their hat in the ring and that is just making the size of the applicants unmanageable. Because if you think about it, if there are thousands of people who just realistically would never take an appointment, but they get an appointment the next day, then the poor people at the booth in Paris have to then deal with people that are dropping out, canceling out, and angry people online asking about cancellation. So my suspicion is that they're starting to use technology to be able to smartly limit who should get a leather appointment the next day. So in short, you may now have to be in the EU to be able to successfully even apply for a leather appointment, not like on the tarmac of your departure country before you get to Paris. And if you're enjoying yourself so far, I'd love for you to consider subscribing. I love pulling together these types of Hermes tips videos. So if you enjoy that too, I'd love to have you be part of our Lux Loving community. Well, all those other theories were really just based on my complete unfounded thoughts on the matter. This next one actually has some backing based on my own personal experience. And my theory is that there is some flexibility around the selling of display only items. And forgive me if this is like old news to a lot of people, but for me, I thought that display only actually meant display only. And so here is my evidence. In my past video where I unboxed my Hermes short jumping boots, at the end, I also shared some SLGs that were offered to me. And one was this beautiful Verdo Kelly pocket wallet. And I passed on that. And that was around October 7th. But then when I went back two weeks later to the store, lo and behold, I saw that very same SLG that was offered to me that I never laid eyes on behind glass. And now it said display only. So to me, this proves that items for sale one day can be converted into display only items the next day. But maybe more importantly, what about the other way around? So in that same shopping trip earlier in October, I also saw this beautiful wallet that was labeled display only. And I even posted it on Instagram saying how much I love this wallet and that I wanted to put it on my wish list. And then here we are literally almost two months later and I got the call from my SA to come pick up my wallet. So spoiler alert, that's what we're going to unbox here but it pretty much proves that display only items can eventually become available for sale. So I just wanted to share this juicy tidbit with you for those of you who have a solid relationship with your essay and maybe they could put in a good word for you for items that are behind the glass. So let's get to the unboxing. And here we are this time around. I don't have that fancy holiday packaging, but it's beautiful nonetheless. and we'll open her up. I'm so excited. And here is this beauty. This is a Bairn Combiné wallet in Epsom leather in Ver Jade and gold hardware. You all know I love Ver Cypress, but this kind of like very saturated color of green also makes my heart sing. And so I'll open it up and it has some nice felts on the inside. But what makes this piece special is that it is the trifold Baron wallet. A lot of the times you'll see either like the long Baron wallet or where it just is two sides coming together. 
and I'll give you the spin. But what I really loved was the trifold version. We have the Hermes Paris made in France. We have this beautiful zipper on the side to put some coins in. And you can see that the Hermes stamp is on the zipper. And I love how it actually like snaps flat so that you don't have the zipper loose and flying all over the place. Let's open that here. Not a whole lot for coins, but I personally don't really use coins much anyway. It's possible I would actually put like a piece of jewelry in here if I was like going to the gym or something. So I really like how that snaps down very securely. It looks like there's about four um, card holders. And then on the inside is this beautiful, smooth, I don't know if it's calf skin or what, but that's beautiful. And then you can see in the back, there's a little bump in the back, but that is just what keeps the little Baron tab on. There are pockets behind each of the card holder areas and also behind the coin holder. I could not be more happy with this and I was so happy that she gave me the call. And so here is the sticker and we'll just take it off together. And this is in the yellow gold. I kid you not, I have been wanting one of these since I first saw them, I think in like 2021. So it's almost been three years. I've never seen them online or even in person. And some people I talk to don't even know that the trifold version exists. In the beginning, I saw it um, called the Baron Combiné, but on the receipt, it has a D at the end of it. So maybe they just call it the Baron Combined. But I do really love this trifold because it is nice and compact. And the other thing, rather than the one that folds in half, is that I am pretty confident that this will fit like my American dollars. So I did bring some props to show you what fits. I'll put in some cash. So as you can see, uh, American dollars fit very comfortably inside. Actually, there's like a lot more room than is needed. So that there's just like a ton of room in there. And then if we wanted to say, put like a Metro card that fits comfortably here. Here's like a Costco card. We can put that down here. And then there's plenty of other spaces to hide other receipts or tickets and whatnot. And when we close it, we have this tab and we can see that there's a lot of space. So it is a very roomy wallet. And this color is just so beautiful. I am so happy with this. And I also brought back up my Baron key holder, which I wanted to bring to provide a size comparison. Clearly the wallet is bigger, but I guess I'm becoming a Baron girl. Who knew? And there was a lot of suggestions in the comments in my last video when I unboxed this one. I am gonna try to give it a chance because I think if I can get a smaller ring for my car key fob, it won't hang out in the back. And right now it's actually empty, so there's no key fob in there. But these are obviously nice and cute together. And I just am so thrilled with this color, my goodness. So thank you to those who've stayed with me to the end. Let me know in the comments if you have any experiences that confirm or deny any of my theories that I've shared today. I welcome you to follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more of how I style this item in my day to day and other luxury moments. If you've enjoyed this video, I invite you to go down the rabbit hole that is my luxury unboxing playlist and I'll put that link here. Please like it if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!